Debbie's DesignDiary.com, this is Serial DIY, one house repurposed week by week. This is episode 27, the tie-dye furniture finish. Oh, you can put it all on me and I'll do anything that you ask. I'll be your rock and roll Johnny if you'll be my John Carter Cash. I'm pet sitting again today. Levi is here. He's sitting by the window waiting for my dad to get back from his doctor's appointment. This video is a collaboration with eight other amazing YouTubers. If you click this link right up here, it will take you to the playlist and we are all telling you a love story today and we're all doing a DIY. This is a story that's kind of hard to tell. If you came here for the usual lighthearted stories, this one is not it. I have some notes here on my phone because I want to make sure I do justice to the story because he was one of those amazing people in my life. His name was Ali. He just had this free-spirited way. He didn't care about judgment from other people. His main focus was experiencing life to the fullest and he was just full of joy. I was very shy, I was very awkward, I was very much making decisions that were not based on following my heart. I was going to school to be a school teacher, something that I did not want to do, but I thought that that was the safe choice. At that time I was just making a lot of safe choices. And then along comes Ali and he is just fun and goofy. 19 years old, I don't know if you can really be in love, but I was completely infatuated with him. Then I realized, oh my goodness, this is not good. This dresser right here is the tie-dye finish. It's dedicated to Ali because he loved Jerry Garcia, he loved the Grateful Dead, and he wore tie-dye t-shirts. I was wearing flash dance sweatshirts and mini skirts. I did not like tie-dye t-shirts. They made me look boxy. I found this vintage dresser from the 1950s at my local consignment store. I needed something to work as a potting shed on my deck, and I knew this would be perfect for the finish that I had in mind. Whenever I'm blending colors, it helps to put a base coat on first. I used Old 57, a beautiful turquoise, and I applied it with our new blending brush. Even though Ali had this amazing heart, he was also totally immersed in drugs. I just knew that I really liked him and that I would probably end up doing drugs and I would stop shaving my legs and I'd start wearing Stevie Nicks dresses. That's what I was thinking about at 19. I told him that I didn't want to see him anymore and as I was driving away, I remember just saying this prayer in my car. God, I don't have the strength to do it. If this is really what I'm supposed to do, then you've got to help me out here because this is really hard. I guess God answered that prayer because about a week later, Ali got a job in Lake Tahoe and he moved out of San Diego and I would not see him again for a couple of decades. This is Bohemian Blue and this is Queen Bee. You lay the furniture on its back. It's not a squirt bottle, it's a mist. So it, it comes out just kind of can put it all on me. Because DIY paint is so highly pigmented, you can dilute it and still get beautiful saturated color. I put Old 57, Bohemian Blue, and Queen Bee in a mist spray bottle. About 20% paint and the rest water. I'm your dark dress savior, I'm your undertaker, I'm your prison shaker. I sprayed Bohemian Blue along the edges. It will come out looking like graffiti. So I went back with a bottle that was just water and softened the edges. It took me like three years to, to even stop thinking about him. He was just such an amazing person. Even though he moved away, he did have a really strong and positive influence in my life. Being around Ali gave me the courage to go after art and to try and make a living from my creativity. I was just kind of denying that part of myself because I didn't want to be judged by other people. I didn't want to be a starving artist. 
Ollie's influence gave me the courage to go in that direction. And I started making the Christmas ornaments and selling them to other stores and going to art shows and selling my work. I use the hair dryer to help the paint dry faster. The paint will move around and blend together and it totally changes the look of it. I did a combination of the hair dryer and also letting the paint just dry naturally. Because I laid the dresser flat and used a lot of water, the paint can pool up and take a while to dry. I used a hair dryer to speed up the process. This will move the paint and change the look. Experiment, see if you like this technique. If not, let it dry naturally. I don't want anything left untried. Will you come with me, Mom? So let us just. I remember hearing on the news that Jerry had passed away in 1995. It was, oh man, Ollie is going to be just. Crushed. I decided to call him and wish my condolences. Even 10 years later, my heart was pounding as I dialed his number. I got his answering machine and I just left a message. I'm sorry that Jerry died. And I just remember feeling like such a dork. I never did understand the whole infatuation with the Grateful Dead. I was listening to Madonna. I was listening to Michael Jackson. I didn't get it, but I knew that Ali would be upset. And so I wanted to call him and tell him that I was sorry. Before I hung up the phone, I said, you know, if you're ever in San Diego, look me up. I just hung up the phone thinking, when are you ever gonna get over this guy? It's been 10 years. Get over him already. When blending yellow with blue, it can easily turn green. I wanted to keep as much yellow as possible, so I waited for the blue to totally dry before adding Queen B. I also went back with a bottle of pure water and softened some of the yellow, but I really liked the way the spray marks looked and I wanted to keep some of that just the way it was. I was in my store working and my phone rang at the shop. I don't know if you believe in spiritual things and God things. My phone rang and I knew it was him and I had not heard from him in 20 years. This is really strange. Why do I feel like this is Ollie calling me? I can hear his voice say, is Debbie there? Oh my gosh, that sounds just like his voice. I said, hello, this is Ollie. I knew it. How did I know that? If that wouldn't have happened, I don't know that I would have acted the way that I did after that. I felt this very profound feeling that I needed to to make an effort to be in his life again, that there was some kind of purpose, some kind of reason for him calling me that day. You said that if I was ever in San Diego that I should look you up. 10 years later, and he, here he is, he's looking me up. And he said, I'm gonna have pizza tonight with some friends, we're gonna shoot pool, would you like to come with us? Yes, I would love to come with you. I, I wrote down the address. I'm trying to get him to be in the video, and he, <laughs> can you see his head? Because the paint is applied in very thin layers, you can easily bring up the color underneath by wiping back with a damp cloth. It takes just a very light touch for this, and the results are beautiful. Who can say what we know is true? And if we lose, then we really lose. And see here, I'm pulling up the excess yellow to reveal the beautiful turquoise base color underneath. It's never too late to set your soul. I walk into the pizza place. He looked almost the same as before, but he was totally out of it. He could barely stand up. The only way I can describe it is someone had taken a dimmer switch to his personality and turned the light almost all the way out. And I could barely 
hold a conversation with him. So Ollie walked me out to my car. I remember I had brought him this heart-shaped seashell. He asked me if I would like to meet him the next morning for breakfast. I immediately said yes. I wanted to talk to him when he wasn't totally out of it. It was like this little outdoor cafe in Del Mar, California. He was back to normal, so to speak. I just wanted to, to talk to him and he just seemed really distracted and he was just checking out everybody in the restaurant and kind of looking past me instead of talking to me. I got up to go to the bathroom and I remember seeing this girl with a t-shirt on. The t-shirt had a bumblebee on it and it said, be yourself. The meaning of my name, Deborah, means the bee. I just told myself I was gonna make an effort to have a real conversation with him. Whatever happened was gonna happen. I recalled this movie that I had just seen about Johnny Cash. Ali, did you see that movie with Johnny Cash? Have you seen that movie yet? And he's like, yeah, I saw that. I saw that flick. You remind me of him. What, what do you mean I remind you of him? He had all of this talent and he had so much to give and he had this beautiful life, but addictions to, to drugs and alcohol just ruined his life. I feel like that's what's going on with you. Your, your life is being taken from you because of whatever pain is going on in your life right now. From that moment on, the whole conversation changed. He stopped looking past me and we just started talking. When I dated him 20 years before, he was a park ranger at Torrey Pines State Reserve. After breakfast, we went for a walk up at Torrey Pines. It was just good. Gonna lift it up, whatever's got me down. I'm gonna lift it up, whatever's got me down. Because gonna the paint is so diluted and so wet, you will need to lay each side flat and let it dry before moving on to the next side or you will get very intense drip marks. I've tried a variety of these mister bottles. Some are much better than others. I'll put a link to my favorite below. I went and I got him this book right here. It's a $5 book that you can get at any bookstore. It's called My Utmost for His Highest. It's by Oswald Chambers. He wrote it, I think, in the 20s. If you don't know what a daily devotional is, you read that one page and then the next day you read the next page. It's helped me through some really dark times. I don't even know why I felt like I should give it to him. I just did. Trying to follow my heart, trying not to think too much about judgment from other people or from him. Hey, Ali, I got you a gift. I thought maybe you would like it. I love stuff like this. The next morning he called me, hey, do you want to read the book together? Every morning I'll call you and and I'll read it out loud. And I, I just remember being shocked. I just didn't even think that he would be into the book. Spiritual things are really personal. He would read the pages out loud and I would listen. So all of this started at the beginning of the summer. And on June 20th, Ollie calls me on the phone. You know, the book that you gave me, do you mind if I write in it? No, I, it's your book. You can write in it. You can do whatever you want with it. I feel like this is a life-changing day and I just want to write it down so I don't forget it. I could hear him writing as he was speaking to me, but I had no idea what he wrote down. He came back down at the end of June. We went out to breakfast. He said, I haven't told anybody this because I didn't want to disappoint you if it didn't work out, but I want to let you know that I totally stopped all of the drugs. I wasn't sure that I could do it, but it's been over a month and he was just stoked about it and I was happy for him. What would you think if I moved to San Diego? Just get out of your old environment, get a fresh start. I think it would be good for you and whatever happens with us happens, but no matter what, we'll always be friends. I use the big top for this. It protects it, it brings all the colors to life. I'd be lying if I said it was easy. DIY paint dries very flat, and in the process of distressing, the colors become muted. The top coat will bring the colors back to life and protect the finish. He rented a house, he got a job, he was flying back to Reno to pack up his stuff and he stopped at my store to say goodbye before he got on the plane back home. I hugged him and I looked at him and his eyes were yellow. Ollie, your eyes are yellow. Yeah, I know. It did not sink in what that meant. I, I knew that that wasn't good. I knew that that could mean jaundice or something like that, but I, I didn't know the seriousness of it. His mom flew 
to Reno to help him pack up his, his house. As soon as his mom walked in, she took one look at him and she said, we're going to the hospital. When he called me from the hospital, that's when I started to get worried. I'm in the hospital, but don't worry, I'm gonna be back in San Diego soon. A day later, I got a call from Meredith, his friend. Debbie, I don't know how to tell you this, but Ollie is in a coma and he's been life flighted to San Francisco. I got on a plane and I flew to San Francisco. I read this to him every day and I just talked to him and I held his hand. His liver was failing. They were trying to get him a new liver. And the last conversation I had with him was, I want you to stay. And if you can fight and stay, I would be so happy, but don't feel like you have to stay for me. And if you wanna go, know that if you leave, you're going to a beautiful place. <sighs> I squeezed his hand and the charts on his machine just started going up and down really fast. And the nurse came in. Whatever I was saying to him, I wasn't allowed to say it because it was upsetting their protocol. I had to say goodbye knowing that it was probably the last time I would see him on this earth. They did an operation to try and bring the swelling down in his brain and he did not make it through the operation. We all have things in our life like this that just hurt. You just never get over them. But the word that I have for the whole experience is gratitude. Drinking it in while I'm drifting away. Breathing you out of my lungs. Up through the cosmos and out into space. You are my oxygen, but you're gone, gone, gone. Ollie's mom called me. She was packing up all of his things and she asked me if there was anything that I wanted. I told her that I wanted the book that I gave him because I wanted to know what he wrote down that morning when we spoke on the phone. June 20th, there's his writing right here. Ollie puts an asterisk at the top and he says, oh five, I asked to let God lead me through Jesus before reading D B. Reno. Later that evening felt like a graduate from middle school. There were hundreds of people that came to Ollie's memorial. Ollie made friends with people wherever he went. Ollie changed my life in so many ways. It was a privilege to be in his life for the short amount of time that it was. He was from Turkey and so this is a Turkish wedding ring and it's a bunch of um, pieces that are interwoven together. In Turkey, you wear the wedding ring because if you take it off, it can fall apart and that's how they keep each other faithful. <laughs> I don't know, but this is his ring and I wear it every day. I've worn it every day since. Sometimes you only get a small amount of time with people, but it's not the amount of time, it's the quality of the time that you have with them. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next video. I've been talking to your ghost oh, You're the only one who knows I know this wasn't my usual video, but I hope you were still inspired and I would love to hear your love stories in the comments. I'm going to leave you with a clip of Levi that is sure to make you smile. And don't forget to watch the rest of the playlist, hear the love stories, and click the link below to find DIY paint in your area. Thanks for watching. Is this? What is this? There it is. Don't get it. Get.